Yo, 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 we back with another motherfucking podcast, man. Hottest podcast. Yes, Never sir. Never want to talk podcast. We, today we got a special guest all the way from Detroit, man. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Street Lawyer Rook. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I I wasn't familiar with you until I watched your uh, Mogul Media interview. And I, I ain't gonna lie, I became a fan. You know what I'm saying? Right, now, I heard of Street Lawyers before, but okay. I'm you know, I'm not from Detroit, so it's like you, you – it's you hear and you don't hear, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But going back and just watching your interview, bro, like, first of all, salute to you for everything you was able to accomplish, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and you still here, shit. Yeah. So that's that's a testament to, you know, knowledge. That's a blessing. Man. For sure. It's truly a blessing, though. I say a lot of my friends ain't really here to tell these stories and, you know, be a part of what's going on today, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to keep it going for them, you know what I mean? Like, that's... The goal, keep it going. Like, I lost a cousin. I lost a uh, blade. I lost my homeboy, Fat Mike. Roy Boy, I lost a, a lot of street lords. Yeah. And, um, you know, but, you know, we're going to keep it going. Now, how do you deal with, like, those losses? Man, it's really, like, my cousin, losing my cousin, he was, like, real close to me, like a mentor. Like, we had been through so much, and it's like, to lose him, to cancer it was like heartbreaking, you know what I'm saying? To that, but like I cried every time I left seeing him. Yeah, it's tough. It hurt to figure it and yeah. anything. So to see him go through it, it was like rough. Yeah. Then, um, like I lost, we lost Blade while I was in federal prison. So, right to see his son today, you know what I'm saying? Close to his father, yeah, and no, because it's like. Like, damn, I lost my homeboy over some senseless nonsense. Right. And then it's like, it's a blessing where I'm in a position where I can be able to work with him. And we got some movie, we got two movies coming out together where yeah. it's going to put him in a great light to further his career, even though he he doing this rap thing. You know what I'm nah, facts, facts, facts. Now, shit, like I said, I watched your um, Mogul Media interview, and you said when you got hit with the indictment, the government claim that you had seen like over 40 million in 10 months so th this is what it was it's like all right so me my cousin my friends we selling we got we I'm orchestrating truckloads of marijuana from arizona to detroit you know what mm. i'm saying it wasn't just like i made the whole 40 million right but i'm just telling them, but collectively as a group they say in this 10 month span we made we sold over forty thousand pounds of marijuana that's what they charged with Thanks, up man. my way Back then, a pound of weed might have been twelve hundred dollars, mm. thirteen hundred. So if you do the math, that's that's a lot of money. That's, that's a lot of money. So we made tons of, of money, but you know, when the government come in, they seize a bunch of different shit. They take yeah. a bunch of different shit, and um, it's a trickle down effect. You know what right. I'm saying? So people people who be close to you, they. are they start cooperating. Mm -hmm. Like, all of that shit is like a mirage. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Like, that. Now, everybody that, gonna keep it at 100. That's just some fucking mirage, man. That, that, that's what I was gonna, <laughs> we gonna get into that. But, like, when you got hit with the indictment, like, what was your thoughts like? You know what I'm saying? All right, man. I was rapping. Man, just the power of the tongue is real. Because uh, if you go listen to some old Street Lord records, all I was rapping about was going to the feds, ducking the feds, and the feds on me, and Damn. all this shit. It was definitely like I was speaking going to jail into existence because kind of what I used to rap about really happened. Like I got indicted. I didn't get a whole lot of time, you know, for because it was marijuana, but it really happened. You know what I'm saying? So I try to be mindful of what I say today. But when I got indicted, it was more like a joke. Like, like damn, you got indicted. So it was like, boom, I've never been in trouble. I've never been to the field. I had never been arrested, really, other than me and my daughter mom had got into it. The police came. They took me to jail for, this was like after OJ shit happened, they mm -hmm. took me to jail for like some cool off time. Yeah. So that was the only time I had ever really been in jail, but I'm rapping about, yeah, I'm getting money, fuck the feds, this blah, 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 and boom. So now I was like, you indicted. Yeah. I was living in VA, and uh, the feds go to my mom crib, and uh, she like, uh, if you don't turn yourself in, they don't really get you. It's like. All right, man, I ain't never got caught with nothing. I had never been arrested, so I don't really know how the feds work. So she like, is you going to fight or you going to run? I'm like, I'm going to turn myself in. I got legitimate businesses. I ain't think about the feds. I ain't never got caught because I don't know how I work. So I self-surrender and turn myself in, me and my mom. And uh, 
They're like, you indicted, these are the charges. They gave me a personal bond because I self-surrendered. It's like, all right, cool. So now I'm out on bond and I'm just waiting around to basically go to jail. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So my mother, she was living at the time. She like, you know, I stand behind you on whatever you do. I'm like, Mom, I'm going to trial. I'm going to trial. So she like, all right, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So my whole thing was like, I'm going to trial, I'm going to trial. And I plead guilty like the day before trial, you know? Mm. And um, not too much after that, like my mom my mom passed away while I was out on bond, you know what I'm saying? Damn. She used to always be like, she don't want to see me go to jail because she had been to jail and shit. So it could have been like my stress, me the stress of me going to jail might have caused her to have a heart attack, anything, you know? So I look at it differently now, like, Granted, jail wasn't hard, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't shit. You just taking away. All right. But the, to me, the effect that jail may have on your loved ones is mm -hmm. not really worth the money. Because granted, I made a lot of money, but I got a letter from my little brother while I was in jail. Like, damn, bro. Man, you left me out here, man. Mama gone. You in jail. And I'm just with my daddy, man. Like, man, I wish you would have never let me. Left me. And it was like, damn, man, that shit hurt like that might have been the most hurtful thing throughout the process like damn you let him down like you know his dad then they're crackhead and you just left him out there yeah. to try to figure it out so then it's like damn what if this situation caused your brother to lose his mind because he counted on you right so at that point it's like is the money really worth it you know what i'm saying like yeah you made all this money but now you're taking away what happened if your brother lose his mind or his sister lose his mind. It wasn't even worth, at that point it ain't worth it. Like ain't no money worth my brother's sanity, you know what I mean? Or my kid's sanity. Like even to this day, like some of my oldest kid probably have an issue cause I was taken away, you know what I'm saying? At a pivotal time in her life where daddies and daughters build bonds and to be removed, it affects. Not people facts. like we don't realize the trauma that be going on in our families in our community like, facts. So, like the community for sure a lot, it's a lot of different variables i feel like people uh in the black community we don't take the time to reflect on our traumas yeah it's like everybody family got some bullshit going yeah. on but but we try to like suppress it and act like it ain't going on but you got some issues in your family you might got some crackheads some drug abusers some, some gay stuff it's uh, it go on in every family like we not exempt to it yeah. we all human beings we all a part of the world this cultural thing that happens in our community but you ain't gonna talk about it you ain't gonna talk about it you ain't gonna talk about it but it affects us not talking about mm -hmm. it we think mm -hmm. As men, oh, we gotta suck it up and be tough. When sometimes you might need to not suck it up, you might need to go seek help, talk to a counselor. That'll cause you to crash out. Yeah, I got a friend stuff. just the other day. He killed himself. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, Damn. but nobody would have like he was a cool guy. Everybody loved him. You know what I'm saying? Nobody thought he was going through something that drastic where he had taken his own life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you never know. Like mental health is like real important because. Shit, it affect us in ways we don't know, we don't understand, mm -hmm. like depression and what's going on. Anxiety, what we dealing all with that. anxiety and all that. Um, nah, facts, facts, facts. Now, how did you get into movies? Man, listen, as we as a street lord, we doing a song with Too Short. This um probably like 97, 98. And um we in Atlanta at Too Short Studio and uh this is a guy named Calvin there. He trying to pitch Too Short to do a movie uh, about pimps with Bruce Bruce and all the characters. And they just talking. I'm just in the room. And I'm kind of overhearing them. And he trying to get Too Short to put up like 250000 to shoot the movie. And I'm thinking, like, I'm sitting in the room like, shit, I got 250000 That ain't shit. That's all it costs to do a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, all right, well, shit, I want to shoot a movie. I ain't know about 18, 19 at the time. And, um, I'm like, damn, that's all it costs. So when I come back home, I meet this guy. I was at a fashion show, and uh, he was shooting me. I'm like, hey, man, you can shoot a movie? And he like, yeah. I'm like, well, what is it going to cost? So he's like, about $250,000. i am like, damn, well, that's what the guy name was Calvin. Like, I still rock with Calvin to this day. And uh, 
I'm like, damn. So when he tell me that, I'm like, all right, well, what is it going to cost to get a script together? And he's like, uh, about 4500 I'm like, all right, meet me tomorrow. I ain't doing no paperwork or nothing. Just, just threw the nigga five bands. Like, look, this is what I want the movie to be about. I'm ready to shoot once you get the people together. So he's like, man, I could get uh, Lisa Ray. I'm like, all right, I want her in the movie. And he's like, man, I could get uh, the girl Maya Campbell at the mm -hmm. time who played on In the in the House. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I want her. He called and asked me, like, do you want Megan Good or Maya Campbell? But I'm damn near lusting at the time. I'm <laughs> keeping <laughs> 100. My head camera was looking good as a motherfucker <laughs> on TV. So like, she ain't getting all I want her, you know what I'm saying? So he like, I get her. He like, I can get the rapper AZ. And then it was me and my cousin. We was going to play the main characters. And um, so we started doing it. We started shooting it. Then I realized, like, damn, man, this movie shit kind of time consuming. Yeah. We hustling like a motherfucker. So we wind up getting Ray J to shoot the movie. In a movie mm. called Envy. That's the first movie I shot. It got Ray J, Lisa Ray, Chico the Barge, uh, yeah. the, the rapper A Z. And uh I wanted we wanted to spend it. Nigga told me two hundred fifty thousand, but he didn't know what he was doing, so we wanted to spend like two million on the movie. Damn. Damn. I like I was the first person making movies God. in Detroit. Like before Eminem shot eight mile, yeah. I shot the movie Envy. You can pull up the trailer on YouTube. Yeah. But I could be Where can we watch Envy at now? Huh? Where can we watch it at now? It's on YouTube. I ain't made one. I ain't collect not one dime from that motherfucker right Damn. now. I've been going through it with the guy who did the shit. I ain't collect one nickel out that shit. Two hundred. I mean, two million dollars a motherfucking drain. Basically, the dude he be trying to act like he gonna bring me the masters and we gonna get it worked out. It came out on E One Entertainment and we supposed to be in like lawsuits to get it back but i try not to focus on that because that'd be having me in my criminal yeah. thinking like nigga <laughs> you got me fucked up you got me fucked up <laughs> I feel so you. i focus on the positive of i'm doing my own shit right now while i'm yeah. all in control like, i did one more flip yeah that's it's what done. i was gonna say one more flip like, tell us about that because i haven't got a chance to check it out yet oh uh, man one more flip it got sada baby in the movie it got payroll giovanni in the movie it got royce the final nine in the movie it got the young lady Mina Monroe, uh, comedian uh, Jackpot, the Juice Man. It's it's a it's a good quality project, man. I, um, we was actually number one on Amazon out of all the movie for a few Damn. excuse me for uh, quite a few weeks, and uh, it's steadily going. It's been going viral on Facebook. Okay, um, it's been getting a lot of love, man. I get every day I get some type of DM talking about a great movie, but I've been marketing it all myself all independent and uh it's really been working so yeah. i'm proud of the project like i stand behind it i'll put one more flip up against any movie made right now Man. like um you can put it up against bmf you know what i'm saying you can put it up against power you can put it up any quality african-american film out right now you can put it up against it like the guys who shoot power and empire shot the movie so i know the quality there i i, I own all the cameras and equipment so <laughs> you can challenge it now granted i ain't got the budget bmf got right and i ain't got the budget of power but if you compare my quality of the film what it looked like the story and if you watch it oh it's gonna be there like i stand behind that i put my cash up we can bet with anybody you know what i'm saying like yeah. Any film distributor house in the black community, if 10 people watch my movie and compared it to anything that's out, they're going to be impressed. Nah, have you seen McGraw Ave? I know the guys who make McGraw Ave. I just got to ask you. McGraw Ave. Yeah, I see what's going on. I know those I, I really know those guys. Yeah. But if you if you see McGraw Ave, you definitely going to like one more. Okay, for sure. Like, so. For sure. We tapped in. Yeah, yeah nah, for I sure. Definitely. One more flip. If you, if you, seen, if you like McGraw Ave, you gonna like one more flip because a lot of the characters that play in McGraw Ave, some of them are in one. Oh, that's hard. Right. Right. Damn, that's hard. Sure. never want to talk hey, podcast. How did, you, how did you link up with uh, Payroll and Soda Baby? Like, what was y'all first? Man, um, Payroll and um, like, you gotta think like when when they were coming up, we was the guys that they probably listened to. You know what I'm saying? We the guys who probably created that sound that they listened to. So I met Soda through his friend. Great guy, man. I got mad love for Sada Warren. Shout out over to all the bad guys over at Big Squad. 
we got a new project coming out, Sada going to be in again. That's you hard. Know what I'm saying? That's Payroll, hard. he'll star in uh, Cheddar Boys, mm, the movie that's, that's going to be coming out shortly. So, man, those are great guys. Hats off to them guys, man. They've um, pretty much whatever I've ever asked of those guys, they've done. So, whatever they asked me to do, I got mad love for them. I'll do whatever. Like, me and Sada and Payroll got a song out. Yeah, it's hard. I heard it. It's hard. Don't trust these hoes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, no, nah, for Once sure. Once the clear has come out, I I'll really be releasing the the soundtrack to the um, movie. It's called. Sh it's really my album, so it's called One More Flip, Street Little Rook, where I, I done did every song that was in the movie. One More Flip, pretty much was mine. So, so two solid records. So that's the that's soundtrack hard. coming yeah, out. Hell yeah, yeah, now nah, shit. Uh, how important do you think independence is? I think it's really important. I think it's all about the deals, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a great deal with a major, then, you know, you should benefit. Mm. But if you got to take a bad deal, then it, it ain't, what's the point? Yeah, it ain't worth it. <laughs> yeah, like, no, but. at the end of the day, it's all about business. If this business could get you forward and further you and whatever you're trying to do, it's about business. Like, if... Some people may take a bad deal, feeling like I'm gonna take this bad deal to get in the door, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna blow the blow the doors off after I get in the door. That may be some people approach. Some people might be like, "No, I'm gonna just grind it out independent till they come with a check, check." You know what I'm saying? Some people are like, "I'm gonna just be independent and thug it out forever and own everything." So it's no such thing as a wrong way to do it. It's just pretty much your preference at the end of the day. Nah, for sure, for sure. Now, I said before, we like I said, we just left Detroit a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and what we noticed about Detroit is that Detroit loves Detroit, for sure, yeah, for sure. Now, like, we don't know. I don't know like how it actually together it is, but like what we have in Dallas, a problem we have in Dallas is like none of our rappers stick together. They all have problems with each other. You know what I'm saying? What advice could you give? You know what I'm saying to to bring some shit together, like to where niggas not not even just saying we know niggas not gonna fuck with each other, but like what advice could you give for people to coexist? Man, I'll be honest, like to see the the change in the Detroit culture where everybody fucking with everybody now is like a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Because it probably wasn't like that in Detroit either for a while. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but to me, as an older individual, it's like, look, man. You guys making millions of dollars, man. Y'all getting rich. Like, this was the goal. This was the plan to get out the ghetto, to make some money. Why fuck up this opportunity to tear it all down with some beef, some killing, some foolishness when you accomplishing something? Like, to me, that don't make business sense. Like, it's better for two guys to go make a record together. They don't even got to be in the studio. You could send him the files, he could send them back, and y'all could benefit and generate some money rather than, man, fuck that nigga over there, fuck them, and that's some bullshit. Like, all of that beefing over girls, that's what it damn near boiled down to, <laughs> some hoes at the end of the day. They be beefing over girls, baby mama's foolishness. Like, bro, them same girls be here after niggas be dead and gone popping that pussy for whoever they want to. Like, you can't not police nobody pussy. Well, let me, let me, that's real shit, that's real shit. Let me ask you this though, you, you think people working together sells more than like people beefing with each other? Hell yeah, I, I think it has the opportunity to do more because it got more longevity. Beefing with each other and then one of them get killed. Yeah. What the fuck is that gonna do? Yeah. Like, shit, that ain't, that stopped the fucking money coming in. So if everybody just keep it 100 and be, keep it cool, it's like, if we all getting money, if he f having a downturn, it's like, shit, we all give him a little bit. Yeah. And he's straight, he back to normal. But if we like, fuck him and he fall off over here, it could be over then. Yeah, yeah. That's what it all, that's how that's all the chaos shit. come about. Like, cause man, like people say money to root all evil. Like that's a lie. We could put, 
a billion dollars in that motherfucking corner over there. That shit ain't gonna touch nobody. It ain't gonna bother nobody. <laughs> if don't nobody know about that shit, that shit gonna be sitting right there. Yeah. But if we tell some evil motherfuckers, hey man, it's a billion dollars on the 15th floor, man, they'll be scaffolding the motherfucking yeah. building to get up here and uh, kill everybody in this room to try to get away with the money. So it ain't the money that's the root of all evil. It's the evil that people will do for, for the money. money yeah. Damn. So it's like, <laughs> that's real shit. The worst thing that could happen to somebody a lot of times is if a person never had no money, they don't really care about money. But let a right. motherfucker have some money now that don't got none no more. He might do some bad shit to get back to where he once was. So right. it'd be like you got to kind of balance that and keep people up, man. Like as a community, we can help one another more than we can hurt one another, man. You know shit, sure. Never want to talk podcast. That shit is real shit. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, man. Uh, anything else you want to cover before we let you get out of here? Man, no, whatever y'all want to talk about, man. You know, I'm open book, man. It's all love, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Nah, for shit, show. Let, let me let, let me ask you this. Now, with the BMF series going crazy right now, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel like it is accurate of, like, Detroit culture? Mm. I think it's movie, man. I think it's mm. I think it's entertainment. Is it a hundred percent accurate? No, I doubt it because okay. I'm sure um, niggas nobody want to go to jail for murder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they just no. killed Lamar off in this in the in the story. Right? Like, they killed Lamar off. The, the, I think, that's not really true. I mean, I don't think if that really happened, somebody be going to jail because murder yeah. don't got no statute of limitations. So right. I think it's entertainment that they've created to tell stories to keep the public in tune into the series. But, mm -hmm. you know, hats off to them guys, man. I got nothing but love for them. I want to see them succeed. I think BMF bring a light to Detroit, Detroit culture to some extent. Okay. But, you know, hats if you, off to them guys. If you had to divine uh, Detroit culture, what would you say it is? Man, it's a bunch of hustlers, man. It's all hustling. Man. Straight it's, up. Just straight up hustling, like nonstop hustling. That's everybody doing, everybody grinding, everybody trying to figure it out. Like it's a hustler city, like that's for sure. Like nah, for shit show. I love it. Shout out Detroit. <laughs> Shout out to Detroit, man. Yeah. But shit, man, we gonna let you get out of here, bro. We definitely gonna tap in the one more flip. When Cheddar Boys dropping? We what's the date on I'm that? I'm trying to get the Cheddar Boys out December, man. So uh, I look to be dropping it in December. I, I was just getting the score done, so it should be December sometime. Okay. December. We're looking for forward sure. to it for sure. For sure, for sure. Last thing, last thing. Where do we need to eat when we in Detroit? To eat? Yeah, where you can get some what good food. What kind of food you want? Man, last time I was out there, I was looking for some soul food. Nobody so, can help me with that though. They got beans and cornbread. Okay. You know Shout out beans and cornbread. They got um, Motown's. That's they good. Okay. They, uh, I, I like beans and cornbread. It's, um, I fuck with beans and cornbread. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna check him out next time I go. Yeah, I seen Coney Island on every damn corner. I don't eat that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's like, I mean, it's it's probably an upgrade from McDonald's or some shit like that because the yeah. food real. But I'm not a Coney Island. Man, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I feel. That's part of Detroit culture, you know. You go to Coney Island and get a hamburger, a fish sandwich, a hot dog, goddamn. Uh, hash browns, French toast, you can get everything from that motherfucker. Yeah, 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 man. Hey, where can the people follow you at, though, they want to tap in with uh, you? Street Lord Rook on um, Instagram, all one word. You know, Street Lord Rook on Facebook. On Twitter, is the real Street Lord one. And um, that's where they can find me at, man. I, I'm real. You can DM me, hit me up. I'm going to respond. It's all uh, real. Right, for sure, for sure, man. We you appreciate again, it coming man. out. Uh, thanks, Never want to talk podcast. Yes, sir. All, all right. right. Really? Oh, for sure. So, got to